Computer networks use a unique IP address for every endpoint. If you want to access a resource available on a computer network, you need to know its IP address. IP addresses are made of numbers. Instead of numbers, humans prefer names to refer to things. Names are easier to remember and use. The DNS service allows you to map a descriptive name with the IP address of a resource. After mapping, you can access resources using their names. When you access a resource using its name, the DNS service translates the resource's name into the IP address. Your system does not use the DNS service directly. It uses the DNS service through the resolver service. By default, the resolver service is available on all operating systems. Operating systems use it to translate names. When you access a network resource using its name, the application you use to access the resource requests the resolver service to translate the name into the IP address. The resolver service checks all configured sources in a sequence until it finds the IP address associated with the name. Once it finds the IP address associated with the name, it shares the IP address with the requester application and does not check the next source in the sequence. The process of translating a name into an IP address is called name resolution. For name resolution, it uses three sources in the sequence. These sources are cache, hosts file, and DNS service. When the resolver service resolves a name, it saves a copy of the translation in the cache. Next time, when it receives a request for the same name, it answers the query from the cache. If the requested name is not available in the cache, the resolver service checks the host's file. All operating systems include a file called hosts. You can use this file to map IP addresses and names. By default, this file has entries only for the local system. In a small network, you can use this file to map names with IP addresses. The resolver service always checks this file before using the DNS service. Because of this, you can also use this file to map the names you do not want to be resolved by the DNS service. If this file does not have an entry for the name, the resolver service uses the DNS service to translate the name. The DNS service translates the name into the IP address and provides the translated IP address to the resolver service. The resolver service saves the IP address in the cache for the next time use and answers the requester application. Although you can install and run the DNS service on the local system, it is rare and only used in a lab environment for learning and troubleshooting. In the real world, the DNS service is installed and run on a dedicated server. The system that provides the DNS service is called the DNS server. The system that accesses the DNS service from the DNS server is called the DNS client. DNS is a complex service. It uses many terms for its operation. To understand how it works, we need to understand these terms. A resource is an endpoint on a network. It can be a computer, a smartphone, a printer, or any other device that is connected to the network and can be accessed through the network. An IP address is a unique numeric address of the resource. Resources use IP addresses to identify each other on the network. Two end devices can communicate and transfer data only if they know the IP addresses of each other. DNS is a service. It allows us to relate IP addresses with descriptive names. Once this service is implemented, we can use names instead of IP addresses. DNS uses resource records to relate IP addresses with names. Each resource record maps an IP address with the name and defines the characteristics and properties associated with the name. DNS uses zone files to save resource records. Zone files are simple text files. In these files, resource records are saved in lines. A zone file saves data of a domain in the DNS database. The DNS database is the collection of all zone files. Although administrators can save all zone files on a single DNS server, they save them on multiple servers for easy management and scalability. For example, suppose a DNS database has millions of zone files. If you store this database on a single server, all network hosts will send their queries to this server. For each query, the server must check all records from all zone files to resolve the query. Because of this, the service takes a long time to reply to each query. Besides this, if multiple administrators are responsible for managing the DNS database, they all update zone files on the same server. It makes management difficult. To solve these problems, they break the database into smaller zone files and distribute them on multiple DNS servers. Each DNS server stores zone files only for a portion of the database and replies only to queries that belong to that portion. This process is called the distribution and delegation of the DNS database.
It reduces the load from DNS servers and increases the network performance and speed. To distribute and delegate the database, DNS uses a hierarchical structure. It uses a dot to separate two levels in the structure. In the DNS database, the rightmost part of a name represents the highest level and the leftmost part represents the lowest level in the hierarchy. Names are written from left to right but processed from right to left. Let's take an example. In the name www.google.com, the lowest level is www and the highest level is com. We read this name as www.google.com but DNS processes this name as com.google.www. DNS uses this approach to distribute and delegate records in the hierarchy. It makes a group of all records that belong to the same level name and stores them on a separate server. If multiple levels are used in the name, the name is stored on the server that belongs to the lowest level in the hierarchy. All servers that belong to upper levels in the hierarchy save only the information they need to tell where the actual record is saved. Let's take an example to understand it. Suppose we want to build and organize the animals database. For this, we can keep the name animals at the top of the hierarchy. We can divide animals into two types, land animals and water animals. For this, we can create two levels land and water just below the top level. We can further divide land animals into two types, wild and domestic. For this, we can create two sublevels and place them under the land level. We can further extend the domestic level to two types, farm animals and pet animals. Under these levels, we can add animal names. In this database, if we want to write the cat name, we will write it as the following. First, we will write the name cat. The cat is the child of the pet. Therefore, we will write the word pet after it. The pet is the child of the domestic. So, we will write the word domestic after it. The domestic is the child of the land. Hence, we will add the word land after it. The land is the child of the animals. So, we will add the word animals to it. To separate these words, we use dots. If we merge all these words to build the cat's full name, it will be cat.pet.domestic.land.animals. This name will be saved on the pet server. All up servers, domestic, land, and animals, will only save a reference to the pet level in the hierarchy. Each server stores only a portion of the database. It stores information only about its child server. Since each server stores information about its child server, a requested name can be easily found if the search starts from the top-level server. Let's understand it through our example. Suppose we want to search the record that is associated with the name cat.pet.domestic.land.animals. For this, we will start searching from the top-level server. As I mentioned earlier, the rightmost part of the name belongs to the top level. In this name, the rightmost part is the animals. So, we will start searching for the name from the animals server. The animals server has no information about the requested name but it knows the next level in the search path. Therefore, it will send us to the land server. By following the same way, the land server will send us to the domestic server. Again the domestic server will send us to the pet server. The pet server has the record for the name cat, so it will tell us the information associated with this name. This way, a server only needs to store information about its child server. No matter how deep a name's record is written, you can easily find it if the database is organized in a proper hierarchy. With a minor difference, DNS follows the same approach to build its database. DNS uses a null character to define the highest level. If we convert this example database into a DNS database, it will look like this. DNS uses many terms to describe things in its database. We have already discussed most of them. Let's understand the remaining terms with this example database. A node is a system. It can be an endpoint, a server, or any other computer or device that needs and uses the name. In this database, cat, dog, horse, cow, farm, pet, wild, domestic, land, water, and animals are examples of nodes. If we want to access a node by its name, we need to create a resource record for it in the zone file of its parent name server. The resource record includes the node name and IP address. A host is a node that hosts and runs a service. It gets its name from the service it runs. For example, if a host runs a web service, it is called the web server. If a host runs the DNS service, it is called the DNS server or name server. A name server runs a DNS service and provides answers to DNS queries. In our example farm, pet, wild, domestic, land, water, animals, and root are examples of name servers. A domain is a group of nodes that use the same identification label. 
In this example database, the cow and horse are the members of the farm domain and the cat and dog are the members of the pet domain. An identification label is the name of a level in the hierarchy. There are some rules for it. It can be up to 63 characters in length. If you want to create two domains on the same level, you cannot use the same name for them. You must have to choose a unique name for each domain on the same level. It can't be a null character. A null character is reserved for the root domain. You can create multiple levels of domains. If a domain is a child of another domain, it is called a subdomain. DNS starts its hierarchy from the root domain. To represent a root domain, it uses a null label. The root domain is the topmost server in the hierarchy. You can't create a domain above it. In other words, it is the only domain that does not has a parent domain. Besides this domain, all other domains have a parent domain. The internet uses the same hierarchy for the DNS database. It starts from root domains and places all subsequent domains under them. There are 13 root domains. For these root domains, there are 13 named servers known as root name servers. These root name servers use static IP addresses that never change. By default, the resolver service knows about these IP addresses. These IP addresses are statically added or mentioned in the configuration file the resolver service uses. When a network application sends a name resolution query to the resolver service, it forwards that query to the nearest root name server and follows the referral to reach the name server that can resolve it. Root name servers do not resolve queries. They provide a referral to top-level domains. You can classify top-level domains into two basic types, generic and country-specific. The com, edu, net, org, and mil are examples of generic top-level domains. The us, ca, in, and ru are examples of country-specific top-level domains. Just like root name servers, top-level domains name servers do not resolve queries. They provide a referral to second-level domains. Second-level domains are available for public use. When you purchase a domain name, you purchase a second-level domain. You also need to configure a name server that will resolve queries for all resources available within your domain. Let us understand it through an example. In the domain name example.com, the com is top-level domain and the example is second-level domain. If a resolver service wants to know the IP address of ftp.example.com, it sends the first query to the nearest root name server. The root name server provides a referral to the com name server. The com name server provides a referral to the example name server. The example name server provides the IP address associated with the name ftp.example.com. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them with us in the comment section given below.